it's like a brain. It's a neural network. It looks like the same way uh, our brains probably process things. It seems like just about every rep profession is going to be replaced. They talk about it replacing attorneys. They talk about it replacing financial advisors. I would love to see computers, you know, reach a state of Terminator in Skynet. Like, it would be just awesome. Image recognition is, is huge. Uh, it's something that machine learning has been employed on for a long time. How CAPTCHAs work actually is, uh, you know, when they're saying like, pick the pictures of fire hydrants, um, you know, in this, uh, this block, what they'll do is Google basically, um, for reCAPTCHA, they'll add adversarial noise to those pictures until their own image recognition doesn't recognize it as a fire hydrant. So that's why those images sometimes look really grainy or stupid, uh, depending on the level of security on the CAPTCHA. And then you as a human are basically making that model better by you know, it knows which ones are fire hydrants when it first places the them up for you to see, but it adds a ton of noise to those images so that way until its image recognition software doesn't recognize them as fire hydrants anymore. And then when you go in there and then you click the fire hydrants, then that trains the, that's reinforcement learning for the computer to basically know that uh, now if I see something that's a little boggly, it probably still is is fire hydrants. Um, so that's just a kind of a rundown of how we've employed humans basically to make these models uh, better. But one of the fascinating things about ML is that we don't, mechanically how it works is you have intermediary nodes that are all assigned mathematical values. So there's something that goes in and then you have a desired output and then these layers uh, just it's like a brain. It's a neural network. It looks like the same way uh, our brains probably process things uh, electrochemically. But we don't we don't really fully <laughs> we understand how this all works, but we don't really understand if you were to take a snapshot at any one point in the computer's thought process, it's just a bunch of values. Uh, so it's somewhat, it's meaningless really to us, but to a computer, like it, that's, that's how it interprets, it's interpreting the data. So if I have a picture of a dog and then through all this convolution, uh, it, and it outputs dog, like however the parameters are set up in the model itself to, you know, determine that this is a dog, all of the thought that goes on in the middle there, if you were to take a slice of that, you like we wouldn't be able to interpret it as human beings. It's a very esoteric concept. So even hardcore engineers, you know, in this stuff, again, how it works as a whole, totally understandable, but like the real machinations of machine learning are still kind of a mystery to everybody because it's just mathematical values that somehow the computer outputs, you know, fakes, fakes it or whatever you want to call it. And then it, it's able to reach these conclusions the same way that a human would, uh, which is fascinating, obviously. Uh, but there's things that computers are really good at doing and there's things that they're not very good at doing. I'm sure you've heard of chat GPT. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Like those for content generation and stuff, you know, these, these large language models, super efficient and they're very convincing. Uh, that's part of what, Alan Turing had this positive this thing called the Turing test, which in a nutshell is if you were talking to a faceless something, like just a machine, like would you be able to determine if the person on the other side was a computer or a human or not? And we're starting to reach that point where you know, even the chat bots and stuff that I was making as a spammer were obviously fooling people, you know, and that was low level stuff. This is much more comprehensive and involved uh but these llms now that the capabilities that they have are just astronomical because they're basically you know they can write you college papers there's lawyers that have been using it and getting caught because it was citing fake cases and stuff so you're seeing it being tried to trying to be weaponized in the mainstream a lot more uh but it, it still is really impressive to see you know the, the types of things that these llms are outputting uh, but they're they're again they're they're only as good as the data that they're trained on, um, which is said that what what did that what it, that comes from is the corpus 
of, you know, whatever we've generated in human history. <laughs> so it's, it's a, so that's why it has biases towards certain things because we have biases towards certain things and see so that's where they're tweaking the knobs and, you know, what people say is like wokeifying, you know, the AIs and stuff because it's going to spit out racist statistics. It's going to spit out things that just don't make sense. But that's just how the data that's been fed into it. So it doesn't really know any better. It can't make decisions, um, you know, based on feeling the same way that human beings can. It can make it can make decisions based off feeling. Oh, it can't. No, oh. it, it can't. That's what I'm I saying. I thought you said it can. No, I was no, like, it lacks whoa. that. Yeah, the comprehension is different. Uh, but said it, it, it just fakes it well enough. You know, now who knows where this is going to go? Obviously, but ML has a lot of. Where do you think this is going to go? I mean, you read you read about it, and it seems like just about every. Re- profession is going to be replaced. They talk about it replacing attorneys. They talk about it replacing financial advisors. They, uh, I read something the other day that said that, um, I don't even know what you call it. A program is they, they fed it, I don't know, thousands of mammograms and this thing can diagnose cancer. Like, yeah, 99% success rate. That's where a lot of the yeah, medical field, there's so many applications where ML is like super, super useful, uh, you know, in site optimization, you know, uh, there's <clears throat> projects like GitHub Copilot and, uh, <coughs> Amazon has one too that, grab some water. Mm. <clears throat> Yeah, like there's products like GitHub Copilot and AWS has one too uh, that I should remember uh, that help kind of scaffold code. So they, it's been trained on lots of different code. ChatGPT even can output you know certain programs like boilerplate type stuff. The way I see it kind of going in the short term is uh, it's definitely going to be a skill to be able to do what's called prompt engineering, like leveraging AI to augment your workflow. I don't know how much it's going to replace workers yet, but being able to, those that can use it as a force multiplier and whatever they're doing are going to have a lot higher advantage than, than those who aren't. So it's just, you know, the, the hammer to the jackhammer type thing, like where it's the evolution of just another tool that we're using. Um, but when, again, when it comes down to it, I, I don't know, I would love to see computers, you know, reach a state of Terminator in Skynet. Like it would be just awesome because hopefully I've treated them nicely enough that they'll see me as a, a friend and maybe they'll elevate me to Emperor of the Universe or something. <laughs> but uh, the uh, yeah, the the realistic like I, I there's a lot of jobs that are going to completely disappear just because you're going to wind up having. Uh, I think there's a, there's a lawyer site, uh, called, I think it's do not uh, not affiliated with them at all or anything, but they, they've, they're just, it's a LLM driven lawyer service and it'll write like, uh, so it'll fight traffic tickets for you. It'll do, it has this long, it'll write divorce paperwork. It'll, it has this huge laundry list of things that like it will, it will do. So it's kind of a lawyer in a box, but that, you know, if you're trying to get something removed from your credit, you know, you have to send letters in snail mail to the company and da da da. Well, taking uh, like a LLM, GPT, chat GPT or something, and then front ending it and then giving it access to be able to print letters and mail them, uh, you know, now you've got this entire work stream where you can have a an AI fighting your credit card. Uh, credit report, you know, for you completely automated. And so what's going to happen is on the other end of that, they're going to have an AI that's reading what's incoming. And so I just see these, you're basically going to have these AIs that are fighting with each other, that you know, just AI is talking to each other, sending each other like, you know, legal documents, resumes, like whatever you can think of. And so the gatekeepers of both of these sides are going to be artificial intelligence and human beings aren't going to be reading this stuff anymore because it's just considered mundane. 
Uh, so I can see that kind of in the near future where you just have AIs that are talking to each other that are resolving disputes in a sense because, you know, human beings become too lazy to, you know, fill out a form to do something. It'll be fun, but. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.